for joining us today. I'm the aunt of Ramon Ryan. And as you all know, on February 2nd, 2012, 2012, NYPD officer Richard Hayes followed Ramon Ryan home, broke down his front door, and killed him as bad on his grandma and his little brother. Hayes was indicted on two counts of manslaughter. But on May 15, Judge Stephen Barrett dismissed the indictment because of an assistant district attorney failed to properly advise the grand jury. Since then, we have been asking all New Yorkers to call, fax, email the Bronx DA office to demand a date of a new grand jury. These efforts are starting to work. The DA has told Marley's parents that he plans to reconvene a grand jury, but he has not told the Bronx community this yet. We are here today to say justice must be forward. We want the DA to publicly announce the date of the new grand jury. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lloyda Cologne. It's L-O-Y-D-A. O L O N and with an organization called the Justice Committee. We've been supporting the Marley's family through this process for justice. It's important to remember that the Marley Graham is actually one out of 24 people killed by the NYPD in 2012. And it is not okay, it cannot be tolerated for the NYPD to continue to kill New Yorkers. It is also not okay for the district attorney's office to continue to poorly prosecute police officers who kill New Yorkers. We are here today to demand that the district attorney not just call up from Marley's parents and tell them that he's going to reconvene by the end of this month, but that he publicly announce that a new grand jury will be reconvened immediately. First speaker is Constant Malcolm, the mother of Ramali Bryan. Constant has been fighting tirelessly to win justice for her son. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate everybody coming to support. I've been having the community in New York City um, supporters. I just want to say I, I gave the opportunity to Robert Johnson to present out, come out here, and to talk to the public publicly about what the to move forward of what we're doing. He declined on that. So I'm here to say he told us that he go, he's gonna reconvene a new grand jury in three weeks. We haven't got a date. So three weeks doesn't mean anything to me until you give me a date. And that's what I want for Robert Johnson. I want him to publicly announce a date for the grand jury. I'm here standing fighting for my son. My son, I speak for my son because nobody's gonna speak for him but me and his father. And that's what I'm here doing today. We want our day in court to prove what happened. Let the officer know, let the officer know, or uh, let us know what happened in that house and tell the truth, not what he wants people to know, the truth. And that's all I'm asking for, our day in court. Where is our justice? Where, when are we gonna get our justice? Every day, black and brown and Latino, African-American men has been killed. And none of these cops has been held accountable, none of these murder for what they did. Um, after the Baez case, this is the same DA that had the case with the same problem. And Nancy Boko was the same one that did indictment on our case. We want to know why this happened. Is this going to continue? Is this is something the DA office is doing intentionally? I hope not. Because we are the people of the city of New York need to get justice for our family member when the one is killed in justice. We want justice for Marley, and we're not going to stop until we get justice for Marley. Romani deserves the justice and his day in court. They never gave my son that day in court. And I want to go in court to face Richard Hayes to ask him why he murdered my son. My son didn't have a gun. He didn't, he didn't rush him. He didn't struggle with him. He didn't run from him. Why is my son being murdered? We want answer. We want it now. Enough is enough. Since May 15th, how much have you talked to the DA and how did you talk to him? Can we wait till after everything and then we okay. answer the question? Okay. Sorry about that. So next we have Tamika Mallory with the National Action Network who has been incredibly supportive of the Graham family. 
Good afternoon. Um, I also would like to join uh, the Graham family in thanking all of the members of the community who have continued to support them throughout this journey. I am here speaking on behalf of the National Action Network and our president and founder, Reverend Al Sharpton. As far as we are concerned, uh, this situation has been an abortion of justice. It has stopped us from getting to the place that we will see an officer pay for killing one of our children yet again. Our communities are under siege from not just the gangs in the street, but also the cops. And we want to see that officers are brought to justice when they hurt our unarmed children. We have been standing with Constance and Frank saying that the facts in this case will not change. We do not believe that the jurors indicted only because of some inconsistency in what was given to them in the grand jury instructions. We believe that they indicted because the facts have not changed. The bottom line is that Ramarley Graham was unarmed in his home and an officer broke into his home who was not even trained to be on the unit that he was on. He was not even trained to do the work that he was doing out there that day. He broke into Ramali's home and shot him in front of his six-year-old brother and his grandmother whose lives will never be the same. Richard Hayes must pay for that, and we as a community will stand with this family until we see justice roll down like a mighty river in this case. We will be here to support this That's family. Right. That's right. Yeah. So next we have Reverend Ruben Austria with the Bronx Clergy Criminal Justice Roundtable, which is a network of 400 clergy concerned with criminal justice. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Reverend Ruben Austria, a member of the Bronx Clergy Criminal Justice Roundtable. Uh, and our group of clergy has been supporting the Graham family uh, because we believe that nobody should have to lose a child under these circumstances. Uh, we as clergy, we're not anti-police, but we are anti-police brutality. Uh, we're not against the members of the NYPD, but we are against bad policy uh, that leads to loss of lives. Uh, and so we stand with the Graham family, and we say that uh, we have to have the same justice that we ask for for cop killers that we have for killer cops. Uh, so when somebody does wrong, when somebody breaks the law, they have to be held accountable. They have to receive the same justice. Uh, so we as the clergy are calling on District Attorney Johnson to reconvene a new grand jury uh, to have the same justice uh, that we ask for whenever anybody breaks the law uh, for the, the, the officers who committed this uh, hyper-aggressive act that resulted in the family's tragic loss. Uh, so we stand with the family, we pray for them, and we are calling for justice for Marley Graham. Next, we have Natasha Duncan, Natasha's sister was killed uh, by the NYPD last year in Brooklyn. We are Ramali! 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 My name is Natasha, I'm the eldest sister of Chantel Davis. Um, it's coming up on one year that my sister was murdered by Detective um, Philip Atkins in Brooklyn. This time, last year, my sister only had nine days to live and she didn't know. Um, we're here in support of the Graham family. They supported us since day one. They're connecting us borough by borough state by state, coast by coast, and they don't even know. We're not going to stop fighting for justice for my sister. We're going to continue to support the Graham family until they get justice, because the NYPD needs to hold their officers accountable when innocent lives are lost. No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Councilmember Andy King, and I represent the 12th District of the Bronx. The Bronx, the district, 
that unfortunately had this terrible occurrence happen in it. But today's conversation is not about all the testimony that we've heard through this trial. We all know it. We all know where the truth lies. Today we are calling on D.A. Johnson to do what he's been elected to do. Listen to the voices of the people. That's all we're asking. We're not asking for excuses. We're asking for action. And the action that we're asking and we're requesting today is that this trial gets reconvened right now with clear dates coming out and letting us know how justice is going to prevail in this case. And I'm moving someplace else. As much as I appreciate my women and women in blue, it's unfortunately that every so decade or every year we have the same conversation of how another young black or Latino gets killed by the men and women in blue. It has to stop. Because I never hear, I never hear of a black or Latino officer killing a white man and all of a sudden it takes so long to get justice. Yes. Right. So I'm asking us all, I'm asking us to stay vigilant and putting the pressure on D.A. Johnson to do what he was elected to do. As an elected official, we have a responsibility to listen to our constituents. That's why I will lend my voice each and every day to make sure that justice prevail here and someone is held accountable for Ramali Graham's death and any other death in the black and Latino community. God bless and let's stick together. Yeah. No justice, yeah. no, no justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. Thank you. That's right, Andy. The next speaker will be Juanita Young, mother of Malcolm Ferguson, killed by the NYPD in 2000. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As you heard, um, on March 1st of 2000, my son Malcolm Ferguson was murdered at 1045 Boynton in the Bronx. When we went to Robert Johnson to get an investigation into why Louis Rivera murdered my son, this investigation says he's not taking the case to the grand jury because whatever he say, that's what the grand jury does. So he didn't feel the case should go to a grand jury. It did not go to the grand jury. I stand here with Constance because this is a pattern of Robert Johnson. He does not believe in touching these cops, and if he can avoid it, he will do any and everything necessary not to indict or put a cop in jail. When Anthony Byers was um, murdered here in the Bronx, what happened with that? He didn't indict the cop. Anthony Byers, Gavoti went to jail not for killing Anthony Byers. He went to the jail for a violent civil rights violation. So I'm here to say, Constance, don't let Robert Johnson do to you what he has done to so many of us parents here in the Bronx. Because right, right. that man has no respect for family. Because I don't understand how people don't see the dirt he do to victims and uh, police brutality. I came out here, uh, there's so many parents like Ali Person, her son was killed in 2006. What did Robert Johnson do? Nothing. When Marco Rosario's son and nephew was murdered here in the Bronx in 95, again, Robert Johnson did nothing. When Amadouli Diallo was killed in 99, what did he do? He messed the case up so bad, they had to take it out of New York into Albany. So I'm telling you, nothing has changed with Robert Johnson. He does not need to go to another office. He needs to sit down and retire and leave the public alone. Thank you. No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! Whose community? Our, Our community. community. Whose community? Our, Our community. community. Next, we'd like to call the Graham family's attorney, Jeff Emden. What is your name, please? The last name? Uh, Emden, E-M-D-I-N. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Francois Graham and Constance Malcolm, and I also think on behalf of this community and the city of New York, we are demanding excellence, competence, and leadership from the Bronx District Attorney's Office. This matter should not be decided on a technicality. We firmly believe in the people of Bronx County and that they will indict this matter if it's brought before them once, twice, three times, because the facts do not change. When Marley Graham was unarmed, and an unarmed man is not reaching for anything. There is absolutely no justification for this shooting. It was an unjustified homicide or murder. And we ask for leadership, competence, and justice. Thank you. No peace. No peace. No justice. Now. 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 So 
Next, we'll be calling up Joel Rivera from LPAC Latino Pastor Pastoral's Action Center. How's everybody doing? Um, I'm speaking on behalf of our network of several hundred churches in the Bronx. And we're not saying that we're anti-police because police officers are in our community and in our congregation. But we are against police that do the wrong things. And they try to say that this is just an accident, that accidents happen. But accidents always seem to happen to Latinos and African Americans in certain areas. We never hear of a shooting in Brogsneck or Pelham Gardens or the Upper West Side. So every time someone gets shot, it's always a Latino or an African American that lives on the Grand Concourse, that lives in West Farms, that lives in urban poor areas. If this would have been an African American or a Latino cop shooting a white kid from the Upper West Side, I'm sure there would have been a lot of hell being raised. And this isn't about race. We don't care what the person's color is that's doing the shooting. We tired of our kids getting shot and killed and nobody saying nothing about it. Right. And we're not gonna stand for it that's anymore. Right. This is our community. It's been a year and we'll be here for 10 years if we have to, to make sure that justice is done. That's we right. are no longer right. gonna allow our kids to be killed. Right. Whose community? Right. Our Whose community? Our our community. community? Good night and God bless. Right. Next speaker we have coming up is Danette Chavis, mother of Gregory Chavis, killed by NYPD in 2005. I just want to say that I think that it's a shame for this family to have to have first went through five months of marching and protesting just to get an officer indicted to finally come to court and have the judge dismiss the indictment on a technicality. When you live in a land that has claims of liberty and justice, you shouldn't have to march and beg for it. And when you do get an indictment and you go to court in order to get justice, justice should be served. I think the, the criminal justice system has been turned into a mockery. I think the things that they propose, they don't enforce in action. And I think it's a crime when you have people, entire communities, who are looking to you and expecting you to do the right thing in accordance to the law and each and every time you fail. Yet those same people, when just suspected of committing a crime, they are arrested, they are charged, and they were brought before the judge for the crimes that they are accused of. There is a great disparity when it comes to law enforcement here in the United States. And it has to stop. And it has to end. If you can't do the job that you are either elected or appointed to do for the benefit of the people, then you need to be removed. This family and all other families deserves justice. Their child committed no crime. Their child committed no wrong. Their child did not possess a weapon. He was in the privacy of his own home, which was illegally broken into by those officers who falsely accused him of having a weapon. And even when they discovered that no weapon was found on him, they could be seen in the video leaving from the apartment laughing. What is amusing about killing an unarmed man in the privacy of his home? What is there to applaud when you go to court concerning the charges and pay your bail and are received into the arms of your fellow officers who applaud you? What were you applauding? The officer killed an unarmed innocent man in the privacy of his home. That is a fact. And that is the only thing that we intend to deal with concerning this case, the facts. And the facts of the matter is he is guilty and we expect the DA to take care of it immediately, like yesterday. Johnson, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, and we had to, um, I'm sorry, I'm 
I'm a little nervous today for some reason. Uh, we had to inform Robert Johnson um, to, to, to re-indict the case, so being that the, the oh, excuse me, sorry. Take your time. Take your time, brother. Really take your time. Take deep breaths. I'm a single parent, and, and I'm, I'm just like, just like broke down behind this, and this is to see this thing have children, all our children, and it's like, I'm just really nervous and everything, but, but the, the message is that when we, at Pitcher Homeless, we want, we want to see some justice, and we want, we want Mr. Johnson to exactly to open up this case, and to get some justice done for our children. No one should be out here suffering and going through all this. We have this letter, and we're gonna just this, we're gonna have this letter addressed to Mr. Mr. Johnson to have him to open up this case and let everybody know that we are not gonna tolerate any more of this. It's enough is enough. And I can't take it. That's right. I am Amen. Brad. I am Brad. I am Brad. Our next speaker is Chuck Berkeley, retired NYPD detective. How you doing? My name is Carl Berkeley. I'm a retired New York City detective, and I've been supporting I've been supporting the Grand family since this incident happened from day one. And during my 20 years at the NYPD, there has never been a case where a black or Latino officer ever shot or killed a police officer and the case never even made it, made it to the grand jury. That has never happened in the history of the NYPD. NYPD must be held accountable. As a detective, I was in the narcotics unit. I watched that, I, I watched that video and everything the police did, every single thing they did by the, by the, from the moment they walked up to that house was wrong. And Officer Hayes has to be held accountable. If there's two cases, that we need people to stand behind. Two cases, because we've never won a case. And even when we win, we don't win. But we have never won a case where an officer killed a black or Hispanic and was held accountable. You heard earlier that Lavoti, the DA office, bundled that case. Lavoti went to jail for civil rights violations, not because of what he did to Anthony Baez. Ramali Graham, we have video and we have witnesses. Videos don't lie, they don't get old, and they don't forget. In the Richard Chamberlain case, we had a senior citizen, 68 years old, a veteran, and a retired state correction officer who was killed in White Plains. And we got audio in that case with an officer use, using the, the, the word nigger to open up the door. So don't tell us that there's no racism. I know it's racism, racism, because I've been fighting against it while I was in the NYPD, and I'm going to continue to fight about it while I'm retired. We need justice in both of these cases, and we will, and we will get justice. Case will be re-indicted again, because the people of the Bronx have spoken once, and they will speak again. And he will be indicted, and we want the case to stay here, because out of the five boroughs, NYPD does never want to go to court in the Bronx. They'll, go, they'll be tried in Brooklyn, they'll be tried in Manhattan, they'll be tried in Staten Island, they'll be tried in Queens. They don't want to be tried in, in, in the Bronx because most of the cops now have been going to jail, but not through the help of D.A. Johnson the way we should be getting the help. Right. So Hayes, Hayes is going to be held accountable. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Carlton Burke. So that wraps up our speakers. I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. I want to thank the press for continuing to cover this story and continuing to keep the family struggle and voices in the in the media. I also want to let you know that on the 13th next week, the family will be holding a rally in front of their home at 5 p.m calling on all New Yorkers to come out. We are also calling on all New Yorkers to continue calling, faxing, and emailing the Bronx District Attorney's Office demanding that he announce the date he is reconvening the grand jury immediately.
As we know, justice has been denied in so many cases. We cannot allow this to continue happening in New York City. If the DA's office is going to continue poorly prosecuting these cases, we need another solution. And in the long term, we need a special prosecutor for all cases of police violence. But right now, what we need is justice for Ramarley Graham. should do, like in every, with, with every district attorney, do what the family wants. And if the family wants to reconvene a new grand jury, then he should do what the family wants. At the end of the day, you just don't want this to be any more of a longer process for, for the hearts of you and your family, right? Yeah, it's been a long process and we don't want to hold track. We just want our day in court. We want Richard Hayes to tell us what happened. We know what happened, but we want to hear from him what happened. Because, you know, as you know, cops continue to lie, and they lie and they lie until the truth eventually comes out. And we hope that's what happened in this court. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? We have a whole bunch of petitions that we have been um, signing, actively signing. And we we plan to take it inside to Robert Johnson. I don't know if they're going to let us in there, but we're going to try. We want to deliver these letters, letters because we know we want the public, you know, we want Roger Johnson to know the public are watching and they're watching very closely because they don't want another mistake in this case. We want the, our day in court like everybody else. That's all we ask for, our day in court. My son deserved that and that's all I want my day in court. Justice, that's right. Thank you. Justice denied. Thank you. Thank you. 